Okay, sorry for the weird camera angle. I'm actually above y'all. Y'all are having to look up my nose because I don't, I just don't want to sit. I don't have my computer set up to where I can like do the standing desk or whatever, like and be normal. So I'm talking to you like this. I hope that it works out for y'all. Just so y'all know, I've always felt this way when it comes to psychiatric medications. I have a very vivid memory of when I was about 12 or 13 and I was very uh, depressed. I guess, I mean, everybody gets depressed, but I was very sad and upset and angry because of what was going on in my home life. Um, rather than that though, being uh, improved or changed in any way, uh, I was referred to a psychiatrist. I don't even remember by whom. I think it was just my mother because her sister works as a mental health nurse. And they were like, well, if Rachel's sad, let's, let's get her on some medicine. And they gave me Paxil. And it was really funny because I almost felt like I was tricking the psychiatrist in a way because I actually wasn't really like always sad. I can even remember when I was at that office, there was like a picture of a really pretty scene over the couch. And I remember when the psychiatrist came in and said I could come back, I looked at him and then I looked at the picture and I was like, even that picture depresses me. And he was like, oh, okay, well, you need to come see me. And my mom was like, see? And it was like, oh, my God. Like, they don't even really look into anything you say. They just take your word at face value. But anyway, so um, back then, I was it was all new to me. It, all of it was new to me um, as far as SSRIs go and any kind of mental medication. Um, but now at almost 30, I am very aware of how it all works or doesn't work, rather. And Caitlin Nicole Davis being put on Prozac at 12 years old, okay, following a, uh, I don't want to call it a suicide attempt because it was more of like a cry for help. She, as proven, unfortunately, knew how to kill herself if she wanted to. I feel like her initial um, suicide attempt was, was more of a cry for help. Um, but it's even crazier that they would put her on something like Prozac, 12, 12, being put on any kind of mental medication is insane, in my opinion. That's teaching a child, that's teaching anyone, really, that they need to be chemically dependent. Um, they need to depend on a substance that they have no self-control, that something is wrong with them. So, and I'm sorry for those of you who are on stuff and you don't have this proclivity to harm yourself or others when you get on a medication. You're one of the lucky, you're the lucky ones. But um, anyway, Caitlin Nicole Davis and her story and the insanity that surrounds her medical treatment is really what is fueling me making this. As a disclaimer, let you guys know that I am not against medication for for physical problems that are going on in the body. Um, if they can't be changed with diet or exercise, then of course I am not against medication. When it comes to mental stuff, however, unless the person is seeing delusions like with schizophrenia, for instance, or having serious memory problems, things like that that go on in the brain, um, with those sorts of things aside, I'm referring to the personality disorders um, such as bipolar, depression, anxiety, etc. So now that I got that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this video that I've put together. I couldn't fit in all of what I want to put in, so I'm going to put that in a different video. I, It's just way, way too much. It would be like over an hour. In Bowling for Columbine, we never really came up with the answer in terms of why this happened. I think we did a good job of exposing all the reasons that were given were a bunch of BS. You know, Marilyn Manson caused them to do it. This, this, or that caused them to do it. And none of it really made any sense. That's why I believe there should be an investigation in terms of what pharmaceuticals, prescribed pharmaceuticals, these kids were on. It would just would be shocking, I think, to the millions of parents who prescribed this for their kids if they, if it was finally explained to them, if this is the case, that this perhaps occurred for no other reason other than because of these prescriptions. Imagine what that would do. Imagine how people would totally rethink things, grasping for every little straw they can to explain why something like Columbine happens, when in fact it may be nothing more than this. How else do you explain two otherwise decent kids, very smart, no history of violence to other kids in the school? Why them? Why did this happen? It's an extremely legitimate question to pose. The Eli Lilly Corporation, a pharmaceutical company, for uh, nearly 15 years covered up their own internal investigation that showed that anyone on Prozac 
uh, is 12 times more likely to attempt suicide than those using other antidepressants, not 12 times more than the average population, 12 times more than those already on other antidepressants. This is a criminal act. And I want to know why these criminals are still walking the streets. And you know, you have to think, Columbine was years ago. Let's look at all the things that have happened since then. All of the suicides, nine times out of 10, an SSRI or a painkiller like Valium mixed with another painkiller and the psychiatrist is just not really paying attention to the drug interactions. But really it boils down to money. That's what it boils down to. It boils down to a lot of our country's industries that are just hyper-focused on money. That is all they care about. They don't care about the well-being of people. Now, I'm not talking about nonprofit hospitals or some like Mayo Clinic. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your run of the mill quack doctor who's going to make big bucks by throwing out a bunch of prescriptions when he knows good and gosh darn well that he should not be prescribing it. Suicidal shrimp, the negative effects of antidepressant contamination. I know, I know. This is a real WTF kind of story. But it makes a lot of sense. And if you're on Prozac, please, please wean yourself off that dangerous, dangerous drug and find a legitimate way to deal with whatever your issues may be that don't make you chemically dependent and don't, don't poison the rest of us through poisoning the frickin' shrimp. Yes, that's right. Antidepressants are a wonderful drug for many thousands of people. While there is some controversy about their effectiveness particularly about their true effectiveness when compared to a placebo, according to the Journal of the American Medical Association. The fact is that many people feel better while taking a prescription antidepressant. Do you, did you understand that? Did you get that little slip in right there? They might only be as effective as sugar pills, but people like them. Oh my God, people can be suckers. But really, there are lots of reasons to not be taking prescription antidepressants. Yeah, it's scary. There's also some controversy around whether or not they cause some school shootings, since there seems to be a pattern in, in a lot of these violent shootings that are, that are committed by people who are on antidepressants, or whether they're responsible for all random incidents of unprovoked mass violence and shootings of that nature. There is, there is that controversy. However, the rise in the number of prescriptions for drugs like Prozac, aka fluoxetine, is posing a new threat that is only now being recognized. I've written before here on Associated Content about the molecular structure of some newer drugs on the market and how the element named fluorine is often incorporated into the structure of medication in order to provide resilience. So basically, they, they, they chemically alter the compounds in the drugs themselves so that they float through the body, that they're not like absorbed and used, but they go through the body and they stay in it and they're just, they can only be flushed. So they're in it as long as you're taking them, as long as they can stay in your body. But here's the problem. It's a huge detriment to the environment. All of those Prozac molecules which are flushed into the sewer remain unchanged and eventually find their way into the water supplies and ultimately the ocean. And in one of nature's great ironies, shrimp who become exposed to fluoxetine do not become less depressed. Can you guess what happens to them, Kevin? Daryl, what, what do you think would happen if you took, a, took a, just one, one innocent little shrimp in the ocean, happily shrimping along, doing its thing, and you gave it some Prozac, some antidepressants. What do you think would happen to that shrimp? Shrimp would go crazy. Probably get excited. <laughs> well, they do not become less depressed. They become more depressed. And they become, get this, five times more likely to commit fish suicide. Wow. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> Studies published by the EPA and the University of Portsmouth are quite clear. Normally, a shrimp will move away from a light beam cutting through the waters. The shrimp quickly learn that a light beam means that fishermen and predators like birds can see them in the lit area. An illuminated shrimp is a dead shrimp. However, when shrimp come into contact with Prozac in the water, they swim into the light, putting themselves directly in harm's way. You are wondering how a shrimp could actually commit suicide. It's quite easy, actually. Shrimps in those areas are being exposed to a very high level of the excreted drug molecules as it hits them before the tainted water can be diluted in the open ocean. Did you ever think this was possible? Well, it gets better. In another ironic twist, some of the medications which shrimp can absorb and concentrate in their bodies can be toxic to humans in high concentrations. Crap, it's like another food I got to avoid. Humans poison the shrimp, which becomes suicidal and then poison the humans. It's a terrible situation. Now think about this, because then it means that the ones that are 
coming into the nets, right? The ones that are being eaten the most are the ones that are most likely to commit suicide. Like, it, we are only harvesting the shrimp that have gotten to a certain level of suicidal tendencies. What can you do to help? It's a difficult question. Fluorinated molecules are being used quite commonly as medications, as medications definitely increase quality of life. And I, I, I don't dispute that in general. I'm, I'm big on technological and medical technology empowerment in general, and when, when they're appropriate, great, but holy crap. However, it may be worth considering switching to those medications which can be, which can be metabolized and broken down by the body. There are still a few choices left which do not pose this accumulation problem. Your doctor will be able to recommend an appropriate course of treatment, but let me tell you the one thing that would solve all this problem that your doctor will not recommend as a replacement for your Prozac is sugar pills. And that's what you should be doing. Doing what makes you feel better, addressing your problems naturally and healthily, healthfully, and not falling for this bullshit from the pharmaceutical industry. Agreed. That just, we are seeing has one more disastrous consequence on top of everything else that we see as if the destructive effect on young people's health, as if the increased number of school shootings and random violence wasn't enough. So the suicidal shrimp stuff may seem like a stretch to you, but life is bizarre and these are bizarre facts. They've had their governors removed. They've had their compulsions uh, removed. They've had their fear level. And this is what the studies when they approved Prozac in 81 had shown. That's why it's now on the drug insert. That, oh yeah, most of the time you're going to be having a great time. It's a hallucinogen. It's in a psychotropic uh, category. But some days if you get angry or you don't take the right amount of the medication or you try to go off of it or you mix it with other things, you will break and go in and kill 20 people at a school or you'll chop your baby's arms off or you'll put your kids all in their car seats, chain them in and drive them off a cliff. In every case, in every case, they've always been on it. And I've talked to so many police. They say they'll pull up it to a call, and there'll be a beautiful naked woman, in one case a cop told me about, cutting herself with butcher knives on the roof. And then she'll just jump off the roof, breaking her legs. She's on Prozac or a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And they found the same thing with shrimp. Shrimp will just come up and start attacking crabs when the crabs are just going to eat them. See, and this is what the public's like. They're like zombies on fluoride, which is a similar molecule to this. And the Prozac people are on. And that's why when they started death education federally in public schools in 1991, even 2020 did a report on this in 1994. I covered that screenshots of it in the police state to the takeover. They go in and they say, we're going to teach you eighth graders how to not commit suicide for a week-long class. And they show them videos of a girl strangling herself with her shoelaces. And then the little girl takes her shoelaces off. She's depressed. She's got zits. Her boyfriend broke up with her. She's 12 years old. She walks into the bathroom on the coat rack. They're even removing the coat uh, you, uh, you know, hangers in the bathrooms around the country. You can search that term. In fact, search schools removing um, coat coat hangers from bathrooms because of suicide and they just taught they, you know, they, they were taught how to do it and and they just hang themselves and they're always on serotonin reuptake inhibitors they're highly suggestible you're on fluoride it makes you docile it's the main ingredient in prozac it makes the shrimp and the frogs and the fish do the same thing you're being chemically hit it's a hundred percent whether it's on purpose or not and we know it's on purpose but whether it's on purpose or not we know it's doing this. Now, do you care about your family enough to wake up to it? Well, you can't. You're on fluoride, the ingredient of Prozac. So you can't. You can't. You've been chemically lobotomized. So I'm about to show some clips from Alex Jones. I don't always agree with him. In fact, I know he can, he can lie a lot, okay? But what he's talking about right now, what he's about to talk about, is, again, factual. It's undeniable. Um, the, the reports he's going off of are factual too. So if you don't like him, don't kill the messenger. What he's saying is very true and I really appreciate his passion on this. Alex Jones is really good at noticing the patterns of uh, the wrongdoings of psychiatrists and CPS workers. I've noticed he, when it comes to those two topics, I don't know if personal things happened in his life that caused him to become very like emotionally invested with it or what, but, but he seems to be sincerely like concerned about what's going on with it and he sticks to the facts and again i would not just disregard what he's saying about it just because he's saying it if you don't like alex jones so the next clips i'm going to show it's from a girl who took prozac and she just wants to talk about it so when i was like um gosh 23 
23, I was working full time and I had severe insomnia, severe depression, anxiety, uh, one to two weeks every single month. So long story short, uh, I decided I needed uh, some assistance and I saw a doctor and um, I've been diagnosed with PMDD in the past, which I'll explain in another video at some point, but basically it's really intense, uh, severe PMS. Um, you know, sometimes with that, uh, Prozac is prescribed at a very low dose to help manage uh, moods and potentially sleep. So I was on Prozac for about a month and I thought it might have been helping. I wasn't entirely sure because it was only a month so like anything you kind of have to just give yourself some time to see how things work. I really wasn't for taking Prozac or any prescription medication but I was so exhausted and desperate that I felt like okay if this is a short-term thing that's fine. Um, as it turns out one day after working a 40-hour week in about four days and having basically no sleep I found myself in the garage and I had just pulled in and I, without thinking, was like, you know what, I am done. And I reached up to close the garage without shutting my car off. And I feel like this was uh, divine intervention and miraculously taken care of. Um, but who knows, it, maybe it was just primal instinct. Uh, whatever you want to believe is fine. But I literally, I kid you not, I do not remember taking the keys out of the ignition. I do not remember the car door opening by me. I remember it being open somehow. I don't remember opening it. The only thing I remember from getting into the car, sitting there, and then deciding I was done and wanting to die and reaching up to make the uh, garage door close and slowly asphyxiate myself with the fumes of the car. Um, the only thing I remember really vividly is already being inside the house in the mudroom and realizing, holy shit, holy shit, I need to do something about this and take care of this. And at the time, I thought it was me. I had no idea that this prescription medication that was supposed to be a solution was actually something that uh, made me decide to want to take my own life. And I can't believe that something that's supposed to help prevent suicide is something that actually pushed me to an edge to attempt suicide. So I just wanted to share that with you. I have no qualms about anyone having and using prescription medication. And I'm so happy that some people have amazing results at the same time. I know that from my experience and other experiences that I've heard from friends and, uh, and other things I've researched that not everyone has that experience and we shouldn't be, you know, prescribing all these things to people when we know full well and for a fact that they can be even more detrimental than what they're already going through. Of all the clips in my video, that, that one of, of that girl talking, for me, that resonated with me the most on a personal level because when I was on Prozac, I was, I was on it for about the same amount of time, well, like two and a half weeks which seems to be like the breaking crazy point for people when they have a reaction to it emotionally. And I was sitting on the couch next to my husband. And for me, it was like the way she described it is like, you, you feel like you have to do it. Like, it's like, it's not even a voice in your head. It's, it's just, there's nothingness inside of you. And you feel like you, you have to end yourself. I just remember all of a sudden at once feeling like, I needed to apologize to the world. I can remember calling my mom and leaving her this long sorry message, which made no sense because especially considering what was going on at that time, if anything, she owed me an apology. And well, I guess everybody could apologize to everyone for something, but truly at that point in time, I like my husband was like, what are you doing? And then I, I thought basically I was feeling horrific about everything I've ever done, even things that I shouldn't feel bad about. I was sending emails to like all of my friends from kindergarten. And, and so after like, after I want to say like 20 minutes of this, Tim was like, Rachel, what is going on with you? And I said, I really, um, I, does your dad still have the gun in his room? Uh, does, does your dad still have, and he was like, Rachel, what? And I was like, no, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. It was like business. It was like business. I was crying though. And I was like, it's not like that. Um, I just, everything's going to be much better. Everything. And I'm really sorry for everything I've done. Just trust me. And, he was like, and he literally had to restrain me on the couch. Like I wasn't like fighting him, but he just had to, to grip me and hold me on the couch 
like I want to say it was like a little over an hour of us on the couch, me in front of the television. No, I wasn't on anything else, by the way, before anybody thinks that. I wasn't on anything else except the Prozac. That was it. So th there seems to be this pattern, though, of, of people either going into a rage and killing someone else, like the Texas mom who was on an SSRI. This was last year, and she ran outside and killed her two daughters. And, like, they either get homicidal or they get suicidal. But the preceding behaviors tend to always be similar. So these next clips are kind of old, but I feel like that that bolsters my point even more about Prozac and other SSRIs is that things haven't changed. If anything, with their prevalence and getting prescribed, things have only gotten worse. This was a while back. This was, I think, I want to say like 10 years after Prozac became popular. I'm not really sure. Forgive me if I'm wrong about that number, but I know that it wasn't it wasn't any time recent. So um, I feel like all of their stories, and again, this is all factual. I feel like if this doesn't, I hate the phrase wake up. If this doesn't wake you up, to me, it just sounds so pompous, but because I feel like we could all be woken up about something. But if this isn't enlightening to people, then I, I don't know what else could be. And I don't expect psychiatrists to be enlightened about this because their money depends on it. But for the everyday citizen who's sad or has a sad family member or anything like that in there being prescribed this stuff, I would really let this be a wake-up call. I couldn't believe I shot him because I, I, I can't see myself shooting nobody. But Rebecca McStoots did shoot someone, the doctor who first gave her Prozac for depression. Five months later, Dr. John Tapp says she came to his office for no apparent reason on a Saturday in March of 1990. I was writing notes in my chart and felt her moved closer to my back. I turned around and she shot me right there. And I said, Rebecca, what have you done? She says, I ain't finished with you yet. But the gun jammed after the first shot and Dr. Tapp emerged from the ordeal with a single bullet wound in his neck. McStoot says she has no memory of the crime, but later insisted the Prozac made her do it. Were you angry at Dr. Tapp? No, no ma'am, I was not. I've never been angry at Dr. Tapp. Are you angry at him now? No. I have, I mean, I have no reason to be upset at Dr. Tapp. If anything, Dr. Tapp has plenty of reason to be mad, at, you know, upset at me. She had no motive. She had no previous criminal history. She had no previous mental history. And she goes down and shoots a doctor, and she had never shot a gun in her life. In California, 75-year-old Mildred Johnson was charged with first-degree murder for shooting her husband, but was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and received a suspended sentence. The jury was convinced that her behavior had been influenced by Prozac. Wow. Um, Harvard professor and so psychopharmacologist me, Martin Teicher testified for me, Mrs. Johnson, even though he's skeptical of the Prozac defense. I think the bulk of the claims is an act of desperation on the part of the lawyer, and Prozac had nothing to do with it. I think in some of the claims, Prozac simply energized patients to act in a way they may well have acted anyway. And I think in some of them, Prozac did produce a state of mania or a state of paranoia that led them to act in a way that was very uncharacteristic given all of their prior history. Out of 172 hospital patients treated for depression with Prozac, six became suicidal when their doses were raised to 80 milligrams per day, the maximum recommended dose. Even if we saw this occur in one patient, it's medically significant to point this out as a side effect. Um, you don't have to have six. Six is actually a lot for a case series about a side effect. I thank Dr. Teicher every morning. I pray for that man every morning. Bonnie Leitch attempted suicide in 1989, just six weeks after she started taking Prozac. She continued taking the drug until she read about Dr. Teicher's study. I show this to my husband. I says, my God, this is me he wrote about. These were my symptoms, and this is what happened to me. That very day, I began to come off that drug. To lose weight. Though her doctor disagrees, Mrs. Leitch claims she's never suffered from depression. She thought the Prozac was a pick-me-up, but it made her manic. I could have killed someone and uh, would have had no remorse for it whatsoever. You could have killed someone? Well, I'm sure. I think if my husband would have fallen over dead, and let me tell you, I do love my husband, but at that time, if he'd have fallen over dead at my feet, I would have been angry because he was in my way. She has organized a Prozac survivors group and received hundreds of letters from all over the world. She hears a lot of stories that sound just like her own. I was on it first from March of 88, and six weeks later, the 10th of May of 88, I tried to commit suicide. Donna says Prozac was the most powerful antidepressant she had ever taken. Within days, she says, she felt out of control. 
Yvonne has been treated for depression for many years, but her family had never seen anything like the reaction she had to Prozac. I was very hostile, very aggressive, uh, completely paranoid, um, just mad at the world. A jury convicted Sokol's client, Doug Cesserly, of murder in the first degree for strangling and beating his wife to death with a telephone last year. I have no history of anything to do with anything criminal, violent, aggressive, until I met Prozac. Cesserly called his doctor in the midst of a bitter divorce. He was prescribed Prozac over the phone, without even an office visit. Cesserly says the drug made him agitated and abusive. Why did you kill your wife? I honestly don't know. That's really bad, but I honestly don't know. You were really angry at her. I was angry at her, but um, that's my kid's mother. And I, I, took my, I took my kid's mother. I'm sorry. I took my kid's mother away from him, and I did it right in front of him. And that's a little hard to take. You know, I, I just can't tell you enough that, that people are going to say, you know, Miss Chase is being conned by this man who hated his wife, who was mad about the divorce, and wanted to kill her. The only thing I can say is that Prozac caused me to lose all sense of logic and reason. I took the 9mm automatic, sat down on the bed and put the gun to my head, and I blew a 4-inch hole out the back of my arm instead of my head. Prozac did this to me. Had someone looked further into Prozac, believed me, even mentioned early on of the so-called remote possibility that Prozac could cause any of these adverse effects, especially the act of putting a loaded gun to my head, to want to die so violently, steps could have been taken to avoid it. I had two sons, David Lee, age 8, Billy 16, the wife 20 years all gone. I'll tell you why. After being on Prozac for 21 days, my wife shot and killed both of these two boys right here. She turned the gun to herself and shot herself twice. The second time that she was placed on Prozac, she secretly purchased a gun on August, and on August the 25th, she shot herself on the head and died on August the 27th. This is hard for me because I tried to commit suicide in front of my five children. I didn't know what I was doing. I don't remember exactly what happened. All I know is that my husband took the gun away from me and my children was looking from the other room. If my husband wasn't there, I wouldn't be here. My children wouldn't have a mother. One woman earlier spoke of near, nearly committing suicide in front of her children. My sister did commit suicide in front of Lindsay. Another woman spoke of hollow point bullets. That's what my sister used to do it. My sister would have never, never killed herself in front of this little girl. She would have never done that. Prozac induced her to do that. I attacked him with a kitchen knife. Luckily, he's bigger and stronger than I am, and he defended himself. But I did this right in front of my son. I thought, I can't believe what I'm doing. I don't believe what I'm doing. This is wrong. Then I decided that I was going to kill myself. The bottom line is, I was never suicidal before taking Prozac. I was obsessed with suicide while taking Prozac, and the obsession stopped immediately after stopped, I stopped taking Prozac. Unfortunately, with my dad, we didn't have time to notice too many changes, except that he became withdrawn and agitated. But that, by that time, it was too late. He got up at 9 o'clock in the morning, um, took a 12-inch butcher knife, out of the kitchen drawer and stabbed himself violently in the abdomen once and then proceeded to do it twice. By the 14th day, I was experiencing such intensified fear that I could not stand to face life as it was for me anymore. There was, to my mind, no hope and no future. Where suicide had never been a logical solution for any reason for me, it now became my only solution because I had nothing left with which to fight and I was terrified to go on living. This drug is most assuredly responsible for any torment or suffering and the eventual suicide of my husband. I was totally out of control. My friends were aghast at my deteriorating mental state, for, but were afraid to speak to me about it because of my agitated state of mind. During this time, it is a miracle I did not harm myself or others. I had become an 
administer society and that FDA is allowing this to happen. I want to know why. How many more people are going to be killed in Maine before you do something? You have the power to change things. You have the power to listen to what we say and investigate what we say. We need help. So I know this was a really long video, and if you sat through it, then that's awesome because that shows me that you must really care about this sort of thing. So I appreciate that, and I hope that this was insightful for some of you who didn't already know. And I'm actually working on another video that is that touches on the history of our psychiatric industry and how it has long been corrupt, how it is a pseudoscience. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to say any more about it, but thank you for watching this.